Here in the town of Ottery St Mary for hundreds of years, on the 5th of November, people have gathered to fill barrels full of tar, set it alight and run through the streets with it on their back. This is like the definition of organised chaos. Got my beer. <laughs> this is a mad tradition that has been going on for a couple hundred years, and as soon as we heard about it, we knew we had to go. So, me and Rob booked a hotel, drove a couple hundred miles down to the southwest of England, and spent a couple days in the lovely town of Otry St. Mary. When we arrived, it was clear that Otry was a rather quaint and quiet town, usually. We spent the day before the event walking around, talking to the locals and getting a feel for the place. And we even bumped into Andy, the president of the Tar Barrel Committee. Now, because we're clearly great at this whole YouTube thing, we was actually not recording audio for this interview. But luckily we bumped into Andy again the next day and he was happy to do the whole interview over again. And he gave us the rundown on what to expect. First of all, children's barrels. They start at the age of uh, seven all the way through to about 15, 16. And then uh, in between that and the men's barrels, which start at seven, to the big bonfire down by the river and uh, where I will light the bonfire. Uh, and then men's, ladies, and uh, we call them intermediates. And that's basically a size of barrel in between, um, you know, in between large and, and a little smaller. One thing that Andy forgot to warn us about was the rock cannons we heard that people were going to be shooting cannons in a car park. So of course we went to check that out. And it was exactly that. People had these small metal pipes that they would fill with gunpowder and then they would blast them off into the air. And they were pretty loud. <laughs> That's way fucking louder than I thought it was gonna be. That <laughs> scared the shit out of me. After the rock cannons, we headed down to watch the first barrel be lit. This was one of the kids' barrels, and I think it ended up being a bit more intense than we thought it would be. Well, this is nothing, this is nothing compared to later apparently. <laughs> this is already pretty fucking mental. I like that all the kids really like cheer each other on as well. Like a lot of camaraderie going on here. Yes, boy. Come on, Harvey. Done. And that's the first barrel. It lasted longer than I thought. It was about 30 minutes or so for just one barrel. Uh, the kids passed it back and forth a couple hundred times. Uh, it was really fun. We got really close. We're going to go on to the next one. On our way down to the second barrel, we enjoyed a little bit of the nightlife. There was a fun fair, some great street food, and of course, a lot of beer. Disproportionately excited about my plastic cup. Brandy, don't look at it though. Tar barrels, it's got a little lad carrying the fucking flaming thing like we just witnessed. Buzzing.
The second barrel wasn't too different from the first. Still in the children's category, but this time it seemed like it was the older kids' turn. The one thing that made this run slightly different from the last was an unexpected interruption. It's all going off. There's a, there's a bus coming through, <laughs> causing absolute chaos. No one's happy about it. But there's a, there's a flaming barrel on fire down there while the, while the bus is driving past. All right, they got through. The bus is through. From an outside perspective, it might look like this tar barrel event is a dangerous, unorganized free-for-all. But we spoke to Sarah from Event Control, who told us all about the planning and precautions that go into keeping us all safe. So we have members of the police, fire, South West Ambulance, St John's Ambulance. We have all our traffic management uh, staff here, security hub. Um, and yeah, we sit in the middle. Um, we have access by radio to all of the marshals and stewards. So everything is controlled from this hub. As Andy said earlier on in the video, before the big barrels, they have a big bonfire down by the river. So the big bonfire down by the river. So the day before, we scoped out a spot that it seemed no one else knew about, under the bridge on the bank of the river. It's always like very, uh, very intoxicating about that fire, isn't it? like nature's TV. And after the bonfire, it was time to move on to the women's barrels. So this is the first of the big boy barrels. Got some, uh, I think it's all ladies carrying it this time. They're fucking mentalists. <laughs> Jesus, it's definitely hotter as well. We're here, it's the first time we've seen the men carry the barrels now, so the barrel's gonna be bigger, more fire, more danger, more fun, more manly. <laughs> we had a couple of beers now. So. <laughs> we had a couple of beers, and I'm enjoying the barrels even more. <laughs> <laughs> nice bit of showmanship there, sort of lightly burn everyone around the edges. <laughs> Get on, lad! Have it, man! Barrel's going all over the place. <laughs> Need to keep your wits about you. Here it comes. Now the trick is to always keep your eye on the barrel. Oh, he's fucking charging. Whoa. <laughs> That was close. That, that was even closer. After the barrel was finished, we stuck around to chat to some of the people. Not everybody had something interesting to say. And uh, apparently, uh, he's he's never been on live television before. And apparently, I've never been on live television before. But we did get to speak with Connor, an 18 times barrel roller, and he told us all about the big gloves they wear. This is a Hessian sack, potato sack. Fold it over and fold it over, and then chicken wire up the sides and around this to protect us, basically. As you can see in there, lots of layers. Um, so as we burn through the layers, there's plenty more to protect your hands. It seems to do a really good job because I've seen a lot of people, they put the barrel down and their hands are still on fire and they don't even <laughs> yeah. notice. No, they no, they no, kind no, of just I'm, carry on. I'm fine, my hands are fine. There's so many layers. You, as soon as you feel hot, you just take it off. 
And then uh, do people make these? Do you like make this no, yourself make or? Bit. All of us make them ourselves. Uh, a pair per barrel normally does the trick. And then, um, yeah, this is the result. And then people, we normally, people in the crowd ask us to take them at the end of the night. So if you guys want one, you're welcome. Yeah, we'll, tr we'll try and grab you after your last barrel and see if we can get one. Now, so if you want to take that. Oh, oh, yeah, brilliant. Yeah, we'll take that. Yeah, a bit of, yeah, bit of a... Helps, helps me to get rid of it. Thanks, mate. Appreciate that. Yeah, cheers. There we go. Bit of curio smirch here. <laughs> after spending maybe a bit too much time trying to put the fire out on Connor's glove, we headed down to the town square for the last barrel of the night. The big one. We're about to head in there now for the last barrel of the night. It's the biggest one. It weighs something like over 120 kilograms. So it's, it's massive. Uh, the crowd's massive as well. So I don't know how close we're going to be able to get, but we're going to try to get in there and get as close to the fire as we can. Uh, it's been a great night. We've seen loads of barrels. We've got so close to so much fire. Uh, everyone's been great. Thank you to everyone in the town of Ottery St. Mary's for having us and being so accommodating. It's been a really great night. We're going to try to get close to this barrel.